this uh, series of lectures uh, will be uh, on two levels. We'll have the slides and the blackboard, and also I hope you dispatch it the colors, the notes. There are more details. Uh, so the, the motivation, the, the, the aim of these uh, lectures is to, I will say, to, to make more familiar, uh, make a local analysis and to show that uh, the history of these uh, techniques in uh, control theory uh, is not, I will say, is it's not very good. Controllers didn't accept at the beginning to uh, use these techniques. Uh, we will go to, uh, into the details uh, step by step. So I will start with the motivation. What do we do with uh, this concept? And after we will introduce the root. We will introduce the material, the basic material, so the, the operators, the differential operators, the wavefront set. What is the behavior of the wavefront set uh, when uh, you uh, handle a solution of a system of PDEs? Uh, and uh, we will finish, uh, I think this will be the last, the last lecture, with uh, more recent tool, uh, which is the microlocal defect measures, uh, which is adapted uh, to uh, equation with uh, on rough framework. Generally, uh, you work on an open domain of RD with smooth metrics for uh, wave equation, for Schrodinger equation, uh, heat equation. Generally, the metric is smooth. Uh, in some cases, uh, it's not smooth, and these techniques cannot be used. The classical techniques cannot be used. So we have to, uh, to, uh, to do something uh, different. Uh, Microlocal defect measures are well adapted uh, to this case. And I will, uh, I will try to present uh, applications. The lecture of uh, Marius was for me uh, very theoretical, very general. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, important to, 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 to set the general framework, uh, but I don't understand the PD if I don't practice the equation, derivate, uh, I don't know, calculate. So, Uh, we start with, with the wave equation on a uh, domain of RD, the, 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 the uh, classical case connected, bounded with a smooth boundary with homogeneous declared condition, or on a Riemann manifold without boundary, which is also connected, compact of dimension n for both, uh, please, for the delta think to the flat Laplacian, you will not have problem. In most of the cases, this should be the case. But we can also uh, use a uh, little bit uh, uh, more complicated case. For instance, this one with the uh, AEG uh, symmetric definite positive matrix, more or less smooth. You can uh, think, for, for instance, on the uh, compact manifold without boundary to the uh, 
Laplace Beltrami operator, and so on. This case, of course, cannot be used on a, uh, on a manifold because it doesn't resist to any change of variable. You have a, a solution in the classical energy space, H1 times L2. H1 has to be read as H01 in the case you are on bounded domain with boundary. And this is the energy which uh, in this case is of course conserved. The system is conservative. It doesn't depend on time. Now uh, we consider small omega, a subset, an open subset of omega of the domain, or also of the uh, manifold M, or gamma, an open subset of the boundary, P omega, and the time capital T. Essentially, this picture doesn't work neither for observation nor for control. These pictures are, are, are bad. This is the case which doesn't work, but it's a good picture. It's uh, completely biologic, handmade. No X fig, uh, nothing. Not sophisticated uh, tool. And the goal is to, to provide observation estimate. I mean, you take this small cylinder, you estimate the energy of the solution of the waves. Here, you know it, and you try to estimate the whole energy from this observed energy. Uh, the same question uh, for uh, the boundary obs observability. You want to, to observe the full uh, energy uh, from the energy on the lateral. This boundary, part of the boundary, uh, of course, this, this, this estimate, this is what Marius called uh, an admissible uh, observation operator. So in this uh, energy space, H1, L2, The trace of the uh, normal derivative naturally lies in uh, L2 of the boundary. It's uh, the hidden regularity, it's known, uh, it's, uh, uh, it comes uh, with the wave equation. It's classical. So we want to. It's working. Okay. Parfait. No. Voilà. Voilà. Okay. So we want to prove this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, estimates, uh, interior, interior observability and boundary observability, and uh, in this form, they seem a little bit hard to prove. So we start with relaxed forms. R for relaxed. We add this term. Clearly, if, if you, you, we are not able to prove this estimate, the original one is, uh, there is no hope. 
uh, in addition, uh, this estimates, relative estimates, gives you the original estimate for high frequency data. I mean, when you work, say, on a domain omega, the, the, the same thing uh, arises for, uh, is true for uh, compact uh, manifolds without boundary, but uh, in this case, you 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 forget uh, about the uh, eigenvalue zero because the constants are solution, and they are eigenvalue of the uh, Laplacian. So on omega with directed boundary condition, uh, denoted by E G and omega G square eigenfunctions, eigenvalue of the Laplacian, and uh, assume, for instance, omega g is larger than some uh, lambda. So for the solution, U zero, for instance, uh, say U one, it's a uh, time derivative at uh, t equal to zero. Uh, so if lambda is large, this estimate gives this one clearly because this term goes on the on the left is absorbed by the energy which is constant you divide by one uh, by lambda okay so the problem is to prove this estimate for instance uh, Essentially, in these lectures, I will focus on interior observability because there are uh, some technical difficulties with the boundary observability. The treatment of the boundary is uh, more geometric, more technical. I will speak about this, but uh, not go in the, in, in the heart of the proofs. Okay, the, why don't we, do we need uh, uh, observation? Of course, uh, we know but by HUM, uh, in Bertunicus method, that observability is uh, equivalent to uh, exact contrability. Uh, they are also useful for stabilization of uh, the wave equation, uh, even uh, uh, of the Schrodinger equation. Uh, also for inverse problems uh, to, to, to get uh, estimates uh, for stability results. Uh, two words of, of, of history. The observation estimates at the boundary or uh, internal uh, estimates, observability estimates, uh, were proven since the, the 17th, uh, by uh, means of, uh, uh, of uh, I will say, PDE's methods with hands, integration by parts, uh, people uh, uh, constructed uh, special uh, vect uh, vector fields and uh, multiplied the equation uh, and uh, put some uh, conditions, geometric condition on the boundary, on the uh, internal uh, domain, is a small omega. Uh, especially, uh, I will uh, code the gamma condition of uh, Jacques Millions, uh, which is sufficient, but uh, not uh, necessary. Gamma condition, as you, 
you take your omega, take some point x0 here, and you set some your condition, you will take as part of the uh, boundary, the set you will the set of the boundary you will you will not be able to, to see from x0. Uh, at the beginning of the uh, 19th, 92, uh, exactly, uh, there were, uh, uh, we saw the introduction of mechanical conditions. To be precise, this approach started with Roche and Taylor in 74, 16 years ago. This result is much less known. It was uh, achieved on a compact manifold without boundary because Roche and Taylor didn't know at this time how to handle the boundary. The theorem by Melroche Strand was proved at 78. So they didn't know how to do. What is the behavior of singularities at the boundary? So, at uh, 90, uh, 1992, uh, there was a paper by Bardos Luan Drausch who uh, put on the table, uh, I will say, a nearly a sufficient and necessary condition, if and only if condition, the geometric control condition. It is a condition uh, which is set on the cotogen bundle of the domain of the cylinder space time, more precisely on the cotogen bundle of this cylinder, in the sense of Melrose uh, Chasson. They call, they call this, it's a very, uh, very sophisticated. Uh, okay, no problem for the moment the compressed cotogen bundle of Melo That was possible because they had, they had the theorem of Melo We will We will come back to these points uh, uh, in details after. And uh, of course, um, Bardos Le Bois uh, used microlocal techniques. Propagation of the wave front, uh, localization of, uh, of, of the wavefront, propagation of the wavefront of solutions. Uh, some years after, so uh, 89, uh, starting from 87, uh, we saw the introduction of microlocal defect, another technique, uh, microlocal defect measures, essentially by Nicolas Burke, uh, Patrick Girard. Okay, the, the, the GCC condition, geometric control condition, is optimal. More or less. We, we will see exactly. But uh, it, needs, it needs a priori smooth framework. I mean, smooth domain and smooth metric. So if you have, for instance, a uh, domain omega with C the boundary, it doesn't work. A metric A, E.G., which is C2 or C1, it doesn't work. Nevertheless, we will, we will see that uh, that is possible uh, to do something. So uh, this was achieved by, by Nicola Burke in, 70, in 97 for domain with C2, uh, C2 metric and, uh, uh, and uh, C3 boundary. Uh, with, uh, Eric is, uh, so with uh, uh, Sylvain Hervé in in uh, uh, 1917, uh, uh, 2017, we had, we had a result, but it's, 
there could be folklore. But it works. We, have, we had the density, we, we, it was continuous. It works, but uh, very recently with uh, Nicolas Burke uh, and uh, Jérôme Le Rousseau, uh, we obtained observability for, for uh, METIC C1 and uh, domains uh, with say, the boundary. When, when your metric is C1, that means that the Hamiltonian field which will govern all the propagation phenomena is only continuous. So you have, you have uh, by characteristic, you have, but you don't have flow. But they are not unique. You lose the uniqueness. There is no flow. So the propagation will be much, much, much more hard to, 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 to obtain. We will, we will come back to these details. Back to internal observability. So we, 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 we make something which is very easy. How to, to read this estimate? I want to prove that the initial energy, which is constant, the energy is constant. The system is conservative. There is no, no uh, force term. Uh, the, 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 the energy is bounded by the L2 norm of uh, uh, the kinetic energy on the observation uh, cylinder and a compactor. I will say if we prove that if this quantity is finite and this one is finite, so the energy is bounded. It's a functional analysis argument. It's enough. Alors, tac, voilà. If so, I, I, I will write down. Relax it. Interior observability. So, e of e is less than plus this compactor. Compact because, of course, of the Poincaré estimate or Rielich theorem, and the, uh, the embedding of H1 in L2 is compact. Okay, so I claim that it's enough to prove that if U0, U1, the data is in L2 H minus 1 and U is is in H1 of the small cylinder, the picture is this one. So you assume that you start with a data in L2, H minus 1. So your solution at the beginning is L2. You can, you can for the wave equation, you can identify the initial data and the solution in the cylinder zero t times omega. So you assume you, ha you, you have a solution in L2 of the cylinder. And this solution is in H1 here in the small cylinder. Are you able to prove that this solution is actually in H1 times L2? I mean, you have your solution U is here, is in H1. Does this regularity propagate to the whole cylinder? If you are able to prove this, you will gain one step, one 
degree of regularity. Just we started with solution that satisfies DTU is in L2 here. Our assumption is DTU is in L2. Actually, it is equivalent with if omega t is a small cylinder, u is in H1 lock of omega t is equivalent to this fact, equivalent to this fact. With hands, you, you multiply you multiply your equation by and you integrate and this is a test function any test function it works okay so the question is this one and this this phenomena is exactly in precisely the propagation of the H1 regularity. So, if you have a solution of a wave equation, if it is H1 near some point, how does this regularity propagate with evolution, with the time? Okay. We will uh, prove, uh, I, I, I will say, a toy result. Uh, denote by E this energy space, basic one, the dual E minus one L2 uh, times H, H minus one. For uh, any U0 one, uh, Initial data in, in L2 H minus one. Consider the two the two assumptions. A1 says DTU is in L2 of the small cylinder, implies U is in E. That is a phenomena of propagation of regularity. Okay? A1 says you have propagation of the regularity. And A2, so please remind that A1 suffices to have observability for high frequency data. So the problem for the full observability estimate uh, is in the low frequencies. We have to, we have to manage with uh, uh, small frequencies. Assumption A2 uh, tells you if U is stationary on the small cylinder, DTU is equal to zero. So U doesn't depend on time here. Implies U is vanished identically. So if a solution to wave equation doesn't depend on time here, Actually, it vanishes everywhere. This is an assumption. We assume this. Okay. And the theorem is this one. Assumption A1 yields relaxed observability. This estimate. The starting point of our work. B, A1 and a2, yes. Question? I don't, don't hear. Relax it. Ah, relax it. This one. Relax it by this term. Because the, the, the final goal is this one. I'm not able directly to prove this so i add a positive term and i will i will manage uh, after to to drop it okay 
So you, you, you need, actually, you need two kinds of result. They are of different nature, completely. Phenomena uh, are uh, not the same. <coughs> okay, proof of this theorem. Unique continuation. Actually, we can we can uh, reduce this unique continuation. I call it like this. Even even I think it's not written. In, okay, I, I wrote it like this. But you don't see. We can reduce this phenomena to unique continuation for uh, eigenvalues of the Laplacian of your Laplacian, flat or not flat. And uh, we have people worked very much, Robiano, Ormander, Koch, Tataru, uh, many people work on this problem. And we have, we have, we, you can go to the supermarket and take your, your result. Uh, but of course, you, you, you know the problem when you work on something, uh, when, you, when you need some result, uh, especially this result will not exist. So we will have to, to do something by, by yourself. Okay, so uh, how uh, do we prove this? Uh, A1, the first point, A1 uh, yields a lack of observability. Okay, look, uh, we, we define the set, uh, the space F of data in E minus 1, L2 times H minus 1, such that DTU, when, when, when you take your, your data here, your solution is L2. So DTU should be in H minus 1. Assumption A1 uh, increases regularity. So we take the solution for which DTU is not in H minus one of the cylinder, but in L2, it's better. Okay, it's singular. One degree more uh, than naturally uh, done by uh, the initial data. So uh, you call uh, this space F uh, with uh, the natural norm, the natural norm is this quantity. Because you start with this data, so you have the norm, of course, in L2, and you add this one. This norm of U in L2 of the big cylinder is equivalent to this one, of course. And uh, that, that, that's, I say it's wrong, it's E. E is the uh, energy space, H1, H01 times L2. This one is E. Of course, F is equal to E as uh, algebraic equality. Please. Naturally, you have E is included in F. Now, 
you take an element u0, u1, or solution u in f, by the assumption a1, it is actually in E, because it's regular. The solution is H1 everywhere. So you have uh, equality between sets, algebraic equality. There is no topologic equality. Now, uh, the hyperbolic energy equality, estimate inequality, tells you that this estimate U zero one in F square, which is equal to small omega u square plus u in L2 naturally is it is bounded by the energy of u in H1 L2 by hyperbolic energy estimate classical one and this one also so So the energy, the, the norm of F is bounded by a constant of the norm in E. Hyperbolic energy estimate. It's offered by, by, by the uh, wave equation. Finally, the two spaces, it's, 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 it's very uh, easy to prove that the space F is complete. It's a Banach space. So you have the same Banach space, the same space E equal to F, which is uh, uh, which has two norms, which is complete for the two norms, uh, and these two norms are comparable. One is bounded by the other, so they are. There is an isomorphism. Uh, so you have. You have this estimate and uh, Banach isomorphism theorem gives you the converse. Um, that's unit. Okay. F uh, F norm is this one. Now, how to how to drop this term? Actually, you uh, you you uh, argue by contradiction. You take you take sequence of data that violates this observability estimate equal to one you you may assume that and of course Say, nice, okay. This is bounded, so uh, the sequence of solution is bounded in H one. Uh, 
by some constant, and you may assume that it weakly converges to some mu. in H1 of the cylinder, okay? From any bounded uh, sequence of uh, Hilbert space, uh, you can extract a sequence, subsequence uh, that is weakly convergent. So it weakly converges for, for, uh, uh, to somebody, you, this uh, convergence, uh, of course, is also in the sense of distribution. You go to the equation and you get for this weak limit, the weak limit satisfies box u equal to zero and dtu equal zero. U is in is in H1. And assumption two tells you that you vanish identically. Okay, so the weak limit is equal to zero. Now you come back. We have already proved this relaxed estimate. We have already proved it. You come back here, the weak limit is zero, so UK satisfies this estimate, this term will, will converge to, to zero because of the compactness of L2, of H1 in L2. So zero here, this goes to zero by assumption. So one will be, will converge to zero. And it's in contradiction of our assumption for the initial data. So we have proved the uh, observability estimate if we are able to propagate the H1 regularity. If we are able to prove that uh, a solution which is H1 here, a solution in L2, which is H1 in the small cylinder, is actually H1 everywhere, Uh, we obtain uh, the observability estimate. I, 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 I said nothing about the geometric configuration. There is, there is a problem. I, I am hitting something very important about the triple omega t, capital T, and omega, because this, this omega, small omega, the open subset omega, and this time t, in most of the case, they do not suffice to spread the H1 regularity to the whole cylinder. In most of the case, it doesn't work. For instance, if you look uh, to the cylinder, like this. In Gauss. We look like this. Omega is here. Omega is here. I, I prove nothing here. I'm, I'm not proving nothing. But we admit for a moment, well, this, this uh, uh, lecture, uh, probably uh, uh, next one. If we accept that the regularity propagate, or the singularity propagate along geodesics, it's not true. The term geodesic is not good. Look at this case. Here, this ray, this light ray, never sees Omega. And so on. So in this case, you cannot hope gain win regularity from omega 
to the, the whole domain. This is not possible, it doesn't work. So there is some, I will say, geometric constraint on omega, the time t, and capital omega. For the time, I, I, I think it's clear, it's t is too short, anything will work. Because I, I said at the beginning that if you, if you are able to, to observe, you are able to control by HVM method, it's a functional analysis business. It's, if time is too short, you can hope control on the whole, on the whole domain. You, you see, if you take time like this, for instance, you, your solution will start here, but you cannot hope to change uh, the solution here with, with your, your control. The, 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 the control has no time to reach the zone you, you want, where you want to, to, to change, to control your solution. There is no possibility. So there is, there is something I didn't say, we will, we will come back. We have to understand the geometry. This is the, 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 the heart of the problem of the condition, uh, geometric condal condition of Bardos, Lubo, and Bausch. Uh, with the, so uh, that was the first proof by Bardos, Le Vaux et Rauch. Very schematic. It, it's uh, really uh, very short. A second proof uh, was established uh, starting from '95 uh, in 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 uh, many steps. Uh, first, uh, we had uh, the sufficient condition in. Uh, 97, uh, Burke and Patrick Gerard proved that with my colloquial defect measures that GCC is an if and only if condition. We will see the details. No, it's a Look, just two, two words about these this last lines. Two words. To get the flavor for the measures. C'est important. I want to prove this estimate. Look. Now, what we did here it was first to prove the relaxed estimate and then to drop this term. Uh, I just used the, the unique continuation argument. So now uh, I, I will show you how we can prove this estimate, not without the uh, propagation of wavefront, but propagation of I would say H1 compactness. I will give an, another proof for the uh, relaxed uh, estimate. So we assume it doesn't work. Uh, that is a contradiction argument on proof two. We assume that uh, it doesn't work, so there is uh, some sequence of data in H1 uh, of, of uh, energy one, uh, such that uh, it doesn't work, that is, I 
I will say, voila. So the, the, the sequence of solution, of course, is bounded in, in H1. UK in H1 of the cylinder is bound. You have your equation is box U equal to zero. With dt uk that goes to zero in L2 of the small cylinder. This is written here. Your contradiction assumption tells you that uk converge strongly to zero in L2 of the small cylinder. That is the assumption. You can, you can prove with this exactly uh, uh, like uh, I did for the, uh, when I multiplied by uh, phi uh, u, uh, you multiply by, by phi u, and you will prove that this is equivalent that UK in H1 luck. I will I will put luck. It's sure. You multiply by and you integrate. You can even take phi of x because the traces will disappear. So this this fact tells you actually this fact because you gain the gradient with uh, this is dt. Voilà, bien sûr, bien sûr. <laughs> okay, uh, it's the same phenomena uh, that is equipartition of the energy for the wave, the wave equation, the solution of the wave equation. So here we have a sequence of solution for which the H1 norm goes to zero on the small cylinder, converts to zero on the small cylinder. If you are able to propagate this compactness to the whole cylinder, we will contradict our initial assumption. So we are we able to propagate this property to the whole cylinder. What is the tool that uh, quantify, that measures this compactness or loss of compactness? Precisely, these are micro local defect measures. So, we need explicitly what do we need, what do we need to treat the problem of establishing an uh, observability estimate for the waves. We need a tool to propagate the wave front set. What is the wave front set? I didn't define. This is the place where uh, things are not good. 
where it doesn't work. Uh, and uh, what is the tool that that defines, uh, characterizes the H1 compactness or lack of compactness of a sequence of, uh, of solution of the wave equation? <laughs> Two tools. This one is the, the historic one introduced by Hormander, first by Wistermatt in the end, at the end of the 16. 60, early 70, and uh, the second one, make a local defect measures, uh, was introduced, I, I would say, simultaneously by Luc Tartar and Patrick Gérard uh, at uh, the middle of the 90. Finally, I, I recall here the geometric control condition introduced by Roche Taylor, Bardos Le Bon uh, We say that uh, uh, omega t satisfies geometry control condition over the, the domain capital omega if every geodesic, geodesic uh, issued from M here, uh, I, I, I uh, put uh, the GCC for uh, manifold without boundary. Remaining manifold. If uh, every geodesic is shoot from M at t equal to zero and traveling with speed one, enters in omega before the time t. I think here there are a little bit more details. I will, I will write. This fact, alors était possible. This will help us to understand some some points. Uh, alors. So, voilà, the date is there. The first attempt, the first work, the first result using for observation of the waves using micro local tools was achieved by Roche and Taylor in 74. Okay. The paper by Bardos Le and Rauch came. Uh, says 18 years after. Because there was the problem of the boundary. There is a real problem. People didn't understand what is the behavior of the waves at the boundary. Okay, we uh, everyone uh, knows uh, the Schnell Descartes laws, uh, the uh, there is reflection, there is uh, glancing uh, rays, uh, uh, rays make like this. You see, you say, rays arrive and uh, come back in this way, hyperbolic reflection. Uh, okay, people, physician, no, people who study light. I tell you, okay, there are glancing rays, gliding rays, or something like this. And eclipse. People know, know uh, uh, such kind of behavior. But analytically, 
but it was difficult. They didn't understand wh what is the phenomenon, really. I hope we'll have time to, to explain what, what happens in this point. Uh, and uh, there are some very, very surprising uh, situations. Uh, I will say warning with micro local tools, micro local proofs, you gain many things, but you lose some aspects. First, when you prove, uh, because if, if you apply uh, the HVM method to prove uh, controllability of some wave equation, you know that the constant you obtain for observability, alors je pense à comme ça. This constant, the constant you obtain here, observability constant, which, is, which was uh, studied by, by many people. This constant is actually the inverse of the constant of continuity of the uh, control operator, HVM control operator. If this constant is small, it is small, th that uh, uh, gives you a uh, control operator uh, which has a which uh, big norm. Okay? So we have to, to know it properly. We have to, to, be, to be very careful with this constant. But if you use make a local tools to prove this estimate, you cannot track the constants. So you lose, you lose uh, something important, except if you, if you manage uh, very, 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 very carefully, but not all the time. In general, you lose the uh, observability constant. You cannot track the constant. Second point. Second point, donc. You can't track the constants. Second point. Rough metrics. Rough coefficients, rough domains are uh, a problem. With this method, there is a problem. So, uh, we, we waited for uh, 95, 97 to 22 to, to obtain uh, some improvement of the results. We, I will be more precise. Okay. I finish this motivation If I stop here, I will think that uh, this method uh, are Finally, irrelevant. <laughs> there, there is no good, good, good things. No good news. <laughs> no, no. We, we have some, some. We have it gained. Nevertheless, we have, we gain something. words about the 
the SVM control operator. Actually, uh, when you are very precise, you call it the HVM optimal control operator. That is the word optimal. Why optimal? Because uh, actually, uh, it's the, the control operator uh, that, uh, that, have, that uh, has the minimal cost. It has the minimal L2 norm. Money, money is uh, important. So, when you try to control a uh, wave, say uh, in the classical energy space, the characteristic function of uh, omega, the, uh, the control set omega, you can take, you know, that HVM method tells you you take F as a solution of the wave equation in the dual space. You take F like this. Zero. Uh, zero on the boundary. F zero, F one in L two, H minus one. Okay. This is the Ashwin method. And what you do is to drop to solve something like this. Okay. And uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Voilà. sorry, voilà. And to see, to examine uh, the, 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 the map L2 to l'inverse. The initial data of this solution which are now the final data, because you, you solve backward in time. You analyze the map that uh, to F0, F1 in uh, L2H minus 1 associates U of 0 and BTU of 0 in H1, L2. And HVM tells you that under the uh, uh, observability estimate, under observability estimate, this operator is an isomorphism. Because you, you obtain exactly lambda u which is uh, is uh, elit, um, injective with uh, closed range and uh, self-adjoint. So it is, it is uh, isomorphism. This constant, this lambda, this lambda is the HVM control operator, the optimal one. The, finally, the control F0, F minus 1 is equal to, to get 0, 0 at time, capital T, you get F, you take F like this. The norm of lambda minus 1 is bounded by 1 
over C, where C is the observability constant. C depends on capital T, on small omega, and capital omega. And among all the controls that drive you from U0, U1 to uh, the, the equilibrium state, 0, 0, among all the controls, F is the one that has the minimum L2 norm. It's the best one. You can check it by multiplying. You, you take another control, you multiply by this control, the equation, this equation, and you get the estimate. And uh, voilà. that, that, that was the first remark. We will come back to this, uh, to this uh, fact. Now, it is a problem of uh, engineers. Assume now you, you, you deal with a wave equation given not by a, a flat metric, standard case, but uh, with a variable metric. For instance, you deal with this the question okay everything is okay you control uh, say on a small omega or on the boundary you, you have a, a control uh, I would say a control uh, process that works you have the good geometric control condition you have uh, you control on h1 l2 for instance okay so now u0, u1, at time t equal to 0, OK? Now assume you, me, uh, because this metric depends on the, uh, I would say, uh, it can be, a problem of uh, geology or uh, uh, medicine or uh, I, I mean it, it depends on the open set you are on the geometry of the set on the uh, system you are working assume you have the same wave equation with another metric which is which can be very close to A. And you want to control. So you consider a box A prime, V, uh, with, I will say, V0, V1, you start with the same data. You want to control to zero. Normally, you put this. Fa is the control vector given by uh, HVM control operator, lambda. But if you now, because the, the engineer make the calculus, uh, everything on the computer with hands, perhaps, and uh, uh, he gives uh, all the material to some people who will be on the machine directly and who will uh, manipulate all these facts. If you make an error and feed this system with the same control, what's happened? I mean, I, I ask the question, 
of the sensitivity of the control operator with respect to the metric. We will, we will come back to this, uh, to this uh, point. You can take a prime equal to 1 plus epsilon a. You patch up your metric by something extremely small in any space of regularity, in any space, even in C infinity. This metric is very, very close to A. You start, so you feed, you feed the wave equation for A prime, you feed it with the same control. Okay? The guy you let uh, uh, close to the machine made some uh, small error. You start with the same small data or the two equations, wave equation. At the final time t, you can have an arbitrary difference between the two solutions. V of capital T and U of capital T may differ the energy of the difference. You see, the, the energy of, of U at capital T is equal to u equal to zero because it is it is controlled with the right control but not v and the energy of v at capital t can be as large as you decide <laughs> it's it's very 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 sensitive this is this this seems to be uh, complicated if you if you understand my colloquial measure uh, defect measures it's easy but this result uh, holds at high frequencies. The phenomena appears at high frequencies. Last question. I will stop here. Last question is the following. You can, you can see the, the uh, uh, kind of attempt to... to, to, to treat the problem in the book of Lyons. The question is the following. The HVM control operator I, I, I wrote there is the one introduced by Lyons. He worked on H1, L2 with the dual space L2, H minus 1, and the pivot space is L2. The basic work was this one. Okay. He controlled functions, states in H1, H01, L2. Okay. HUM control operator control functions on L2 H1 L2 you start with U0 V1 here and you uh, you reach the zero state. This is uh, the theorem of Bardos Luana, uh, Barda, um, uh, Jacques Lidios in his book. This is Lambda. He uh, talked in, in some, some, some lines about the following problem. Now, as, alors, we, know, we know that this Lambda, when you give him this initial data, this state, he will give you a control, excuse me, F, especially F0, F1, in L2. So the solution, the control you put on the right, is in L2. 
Okay. The question is, if I feed now, if I, if I, if I uh, try to control in, say, H3 uh, cap H01, of course, you is uh, equal to zero on the, on the boundary. If you try to control a data which is more regular, HUM control operator say nothing. Okay, it, it will accept this data, but if we take this data, you have a black box. You put U0, U1. When it arrives to the black box, it will consider that it lives in H1, L2. It will give, introduce in the machinery, an F, which is an L2 control, and reach the, 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 the zero state. So during the control time, the solution will be completely distracted, starting with H3, H2 regularity, that is a solution in H3, it becomes H1, and so zero becomes again H3. And we, we, are, we are saying that F, the HVM control operator vector, is the best one because it uh, has uh, the, 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 the smallest cost. Uh, it's optimal. There is something that doesn't work. Something is not understood. Actually, the HVM control operator of uh, Jacques Louis Lyons identifies the regularity. When you want to when you want to control data which are more regular than H1 L2, lambda knows it and it will put uh, an adapted control. More precisely, on a manifold, compact remaining manifold without boundary, we were able to prove it only on a manifold without boundary because we, we, we will see it again. On a manifold without count boundary, lambda is a pseudo, pseudo differential operator. So it will conserve the of zero order. It will conserve the regularity. It will detect the singularities. And of course, it is invertible. And we know the principal symbol. We know it. This is due to uh, something which doesn't work on an open domain. Uh, this is due to uh, the Egor of Tehran. When you conjugate the differential operator by uh, fully integral operators, they do not, they do not, a priori, they do not uh, com not commute, but they do not compose, but when you conjugate a pseudo differential operator by fully integral operators, that gives you a pseudo differential operator. You do not keep this class. We will come back to, to this. Uh, to this. Uh, uh, there is a problem of uh, when you increase the regularity, and if you if you if you if you uh, want to control the data which is which lives at high frequency. How is the control? HVM control operator lambda say nothing 
but the engineer will not will not accept this this operator you, you see the engineer want to 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 spend uh, uh, as uh, as uh, small as uh, possible uh, to to uh, to control so when u0 u1 the initial data uh, leaves at high frequency uh, f0 f1 will also leave at high frequency i mean lambda controls the frequencies of the data almost individually. The frequencies are al almost uh, controlled individually. This was done in a paper at, to, 10 years ago with Gilles Lebeau. Voilà. So, uh, tomorrow. Thank you. Riemannian manifold. When when you work on a on a Riemannian manifold, the first thing the, the, the first thing you, you have to, to take care of it is that zero is a vacant value. It's not a good news. So I will I will. Uh, detail a case on a compact manifold without boundary. I will not uh, deal with the wave equation. I will deal with I will say uh, something like this with claim Gordon. We add some positive constant, so we eject, we We drop out the, 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 the eigenvalue zero. It doesn't exist. But the, this case is uh, really on, on a compact manifold without boundary. Uh, there is this problem. Otherwise, the, the, the other problems are exactly uh, the same. But you have to you have to to deal with the variable metric. I don't know. Uh, I would say uh, true theorem on control on such, uh, any any kind of results in, in this in this, which is variable deep, uh, 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 independent. I mean, all the coefficients are variable dependent. Otherwise, your theorem will not resist to any change. Of variable. It doesn't work. <laughs> but we, okay. 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 Yes, I have just a question by curiosity. So if I have understood well, it was very difficult to pass from C2 regularity for the metric to C1 regularity for the metric. But is it possible to gain a little bit and to obtain, for instance, Lipschitz regularity for the metric or C alpha regularity? For the, for the metric. For, only for the metric. Let's forget about the domain. We have, for the we have a result. You, you see, in this case, you, you have no geometry. C alpha. You have no geometry, you have no, you can define nothing. So GCC doesn't exist. But we have a result. We have a result uh, for uh, Lipschitz, but a perturbation result. The, 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 uh, it's, it's very easy. You take a C1 metric that satisfies GCC. If a metric is Lipschitz and enough close to this metric, it is also observable. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So uh, the statement is, is easy. The proof uses a deep result of harmonic analysis. Really. Uh, but you, 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 you're right. This is a question. This is a question. Thank you. Natural question. 
Of course. Thank you.